Welcome to the Talk with a Doc show. Today, we are talking about Atomic Habits. It's actually a book that I picked up um, in 2021. It's probably one of my favorite reads. I read it or I heard it twice on my audiobook. And I want to talk about it, approaching new year, approaching new habits. Everybody puts in their new year's resolution, but I want, but I want to teach you the lessons I learned from Atomic Habit, and you should uh, you should grab the book or the audiobook, which one that you like. It's really actually done well audio, and have a look at it. It really really helps you to understand why those resolutions do not come through, and it's because we do not. It's not about just having the goal; it's about changing the person that you are. And he'll go through this, and it's just fantastic. But I will go through some of the major pointers here please buy the book. It'll really, really help you with your health habits. So for those of you that just joined, welcome to the Talk with a Doc show. My name is Dr. Shereen Banakdar. I'm a corrective care chiropractor. I'm also a functional nutrition and detox specialist. This is our weekly podcast and video. It's recorded on YouTube for you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to connect with us on our website that will take you to all the social media channels, including our YouTube as well as our podcast. Our website is www.harmonywellness-frisco.com. Again, www.harmonywellness-frisco.com. So make sure that you like us on our podcast, on our YouTube, on our Instagram, as well as our Facebook. We always love to have you subscribe. So make sure you subscribe, please. And we really appreciate your referrals. So please share our podcast and our videos with those that you think really need to hear this information. We are here to build a community of inspired individuals that would love to further their health habits, bring wellness to not only their lives, but the, but the lives of their families and those that they love. So let's talk about this atomic um, Uh, Let's talk about this Atomic Habit book, and we're going to go over some of the habit changes that it talks about. It's probably one of the best ways to improve your health that um, it really helps to um, improve your health habits gradually. So we're going to walk through some of the key points of the Atomic Habit book today uh, with some, I'm going to give you some examples so that it also helps you um, to actually implement this stuff. So what are some of the so what are the, some of the examples? Number one is to make small changes compound slowly over time. So what this means is, at the beginning of the book, uh, James Clear actually points out that gradually improving your habits is probably the best way to succeed in the long run in any area of your life. Since major changes don't really happen overnight, people often get frustrated and they give up. But if you just make a small changes. Uh, and stick with it, it'll lead to massive transformations over a long, uh, over a long run. So one of the um, things that we talk about when it comes to health is when people start a new exercise or a nutrition regimen, they often expect to see their dramatic results right away. Like I want to lose 10 pounds in a week. But this is the reason why people make a New Year's resolution, and then think of how often they give it up about a week later because they haven't seen major results. So please don't be like them. If you want to make significant improvement, you really have to start with the small changes that you can commit to consistently over time. For example, if you commit to just replacing replacing um, one processed junk food with a healthier options, okay? So for example, just commit to replacing the cereal that you eat in the morning or the oatmeal or the granola balls, ball, bars with eggs and vegetables for breakfast. Just doing one thing over a period of time. Keep it simple, start really small, and after a while, the cumulative positive effect will be bigger than you expect. Or if uh, doing breakfast is not your thing, just uh, start replacing your dinners with a protein, a piece of salmon or steak or chicken with vegetables or salad. And that's the one change you're going to do for the next month. It really, really, really helps you to get to the goals that you want. It's only one change is not overwhelming and you can plan it day in, day out. Small improvements to your health habits are what really helps. Systems are better than goals. 
When you make a goal, there are basically two possible outcomes. You either succeed or you fail. For example, people often make really ambitious weight loss goals, but since they don't have the right habits in place, they typically fail and then they feel depressed. And believe me, I've been there. Goals also feed the illusion that everything will be great once you reach a particular goal. So what's a better option? Instead of setting a goal, focus on gradually improving your system. Your system is made up of a bunch of habits, large and small, and you start by changing one habit at a time. For example, if you want to lose weight, start by cutting out sugary sodas and juices out of your diet. Once you change that one single habit, weight loss will start to happen naturally with a lot less effort. And then you can go ahead and change your dinners to include no sugar or carbohydrates, and then weight loss will start to happen again. So as as the author puts it, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. I want you to understand that every action reinforces your identity. So right now you have an identity associated with your current habit. For example, if you want to lose weight, you now identify yourself as someone who may be obese or overweight or has a few extra pounds. Each time you do something new or different, that's one vote for that new identity. So each time that you're skipping that sugary soda, you are now a person that drinks healthy drinks. Each time you're skipping the carbs for dinner, you are now a person that's eating healthy. But taking those small but consistent action, you can create new beliefs about yourself, which results in a new identity. And that new identity will will in turn help to support better habits. It's a virtuous cycle. You want to build a healthy identity. Each time you take a small healthy action, like um, choosing... Uh, a better food option or exercising for a few minutes, that helps to build a health identity. So uh, slowly you become a runner, slowly you become an athlete, slowly you become someone who is nutritionally sound, just with small action. You got to notice your habit loops. He talks quite a bit about this. That means that when it comes to your habit, there is a cue there that causes you to crave doing something that helps you to set a routine and then there is a reward. And that's a sequence of events that happens each time that you perform any habit. Since most habits happen really unconsciously, the first step in change is to become really aware of what it is that you want to change. So you want to try to pay attention to what cues are initiating your good or your bad habits. What makes you think of it? What are the cravings? What happens next? What's the ultimate reward? For example, cue always happens before you eat junk food or smoke cigarettes. So what's the cue? Is it stress? Is it somebody that you work with that is completely stressing you out? Is it the amount of work that you're doing? Is it um, driving from work to home where you're passing by a McDonald's and that cue is... Um, affecting you so that you go in, you drive up, you grab something. So what situations are you typically in when that cue happens? And as you're building awareness, you'll have an easier time adjusting your habits. Interestingly, awareness is also the first step to interrupt an anxiety loop. And we'll talk about that um, in a later time. So now you can go ahead and create your own habit. But before we do that, you want to make sure that you know a couple of things. In the book, he talks about four laws of habit change. So he talks about make it obvious. Every habit has a cue that helps to make that cue really obvious when you're trying to establish a new habit. So how can you apply this to fitness or to fasting? Decide what time of day and in what location you're going to exercise. That's called an implementation intention, okay? After that, set a reminding which acts as your cue. And a final step, you wanna put your workout gear in a convenient location that you'll be really ready to to roll once that cue happens. When it comes to fasting, you could choose a very simple schedule for the week, write it in big, bold letters on a piece of paper, hang it on a wall where you see it every day. Similarly, there are fasting apps that usually have various notifications that you could use to remind yourself about your plan and that to keep you on schedule. 
our environment is so much stronger than our willpower. So you want to make sure for short term that you change your environment. For example, if you want, if you eat a certain type of food and you put it in a place where you see it, and if you don't want to eat that certain type of food, I would probably remove it into a place that you wouldn't want to see it. So changing your food environment will have a bigger impact than just trying to exert self-control. Think about other ways that you could change your environment to make cues for good habit obvious and cues for bad habits invisible. Now, law number two is to make it appealing. Remember that the second step in our habit loop was craving. So let's go, um, let's go back to that. So the second step is craving. Pairing good habits with things that are pleasurable. For example, when you exercise, you could listen to music that you really like or watch a show or listen to a podcast or an audiobook that you really enjoy. Anticipating the opportunity to enjoy the podcast episode while you work out will make you look forward to that activity. In other words, you start to crave it. You want to make it obvious. You want to make it appealing. You want to make it easy. You want to make it satisfying. Another way to make an activity appealing is to associate it with a positive feeling. For example, after I got a little bit of experience with prolonged fasting, I noticed that consistently leads to mental clarity or even a sense of euphoria. Thinking about good feelings that come from fasting made me do a prolonged fast more appealing. So you could spend a few minutes thinking about how fasting will lower your risk of diabetes, heart disease, or other health problems. You could visualize yourself with and without diabetes. And another approach would be to spend some time thinking about how much more productive you can be if you skip breakfast or dinner, and that could make short-term daily fasting seem more appealing. Interestingly, the anticipation of an activity actually creates a bigger reward in your brain than the actual activity itself. So anything you can do to associate good habit with positive feeling can really help you stick to that particular habit. Number four, use groups and cultures to your advantage. I'm sorry, we're still on rule number two. So another thing that we can do to make good habits appealing is when they help you fit in with a particular group, like family, uh, friends, or church group. Think about what groups you're spending time with and whether they enforce your good habits or your bad habits. I'm going to give you a note about family. Since you can't really avoid family, try talking to them about your plans and see if they want to try fasting with you or exercising with you. That way you can create a very healthy culture inside your own home. Another option for fasting is to join an online forum or a group to help keep you motivated as well as accountable. You could read other people's success stories, you'll feel inspired, and if you can find a similar group that meets in person, even better. Now, Number three, you want to make it easy. Probably the biggest mistake that people make when they're trying to prove any area of their life is a big, any area of their health is that it becomes really complicated and overwhelming. Think back to all those New Year's resolutions that uh, people make. It's usually something really ambitious, right? So you want it like spending hours in the gym every single day. If you're not used to going to the gym every single day and spending hours there, then it's probably not going to last very long. But why not try something easier? For example, um, set up a repetition system and start forming a new identity. Um, if you started with just five minutes of exercise a day at home using simple equipment like resistance band or just, um, or just body weight, do something really simple. Choose something really easy. Then you're more likely to stick with it for a while, which gives your brain some time to adapt to the new habit. Once you've established a consistent habit, then you can work on improving it, like increasing the duration from five minutes to 10 minutes or increasing the intensity. Um, and that's pretty much it. I hope that this really, really helped you. And I know it helped me a lot. So again, um, he's also got a, an app that you can download that helps you to set your new habits. But we're going to talk about this a lot more. For those of you that joined us, please make sure that you like us on Facebook, on Instagram, follow us on YouTube, as well as on our podcast. So welcome to the Talk with a Doc show. And my name is Dr. Shereen Benakdar. I am your corrective care chiropractor, a functional nutrition and detox specialist. And this is our weekly podcast and recorded as well as a YouTube video. God bless you. Remember who you are.